is referring to youth who are children of veterans of Renzuru. That's the meaning. I think here in Uganda you, you have a term as well. Bazikuru or something like that. Banabachi. That's the type of, of theory. Uh -huh. And this is a, a, a formation for someone who is strategic to continue making yourself relevant. Because if you don't have young people supporting your ideology, when you are gone, it's also gone. So it's like you have youth league of an Arab. <laughs> so it's your mango is youth league of Renzuru Kingdom. Are you aware that the king of Renzuru is developing a force, an armed force? He's training them, he's passing them out, and he's deployed them in sub-counties, they're in charge of sub-counties for raising and lowering flags. We don't, there was no evidence that they are being paid, and um, even in his own palace, there's a huge number close to the strength of a company, and, um, and which has created conf conflict between him and the national uh, uh, force that is accorded to him for security. And this reason clashes first to the government to withdraw temporarily, though the president has directed that they can be reinstated. Singa has developed a big force of, uh, of uh, Nani, the royal guards. Mm. I think this has been our fault in the state. Mm. We've been soft on certain things. You know, to, to have a king to maintain a force of 30 plus at every sub county. If you have 30 sub counties, that's uh, 900 people. Mm. The implications are many. The first one was uh, Simon, you are saying, what do they eat? Do they have a salary? Mm -hmm. Are they armed? Who commands them? And then the opportunities they can take advantage of something like this. The state we knew, but <laughs> we did nothing. As I said, we are learning lessons from, from the way we are handling uh, uh, these issues. On that one of the Singapore Rens rule, it was alleged that um, the doctor has been that in previous he was opposed to it, that even if later on he accepted and supported it through its recognition, he continued to undermine them. The most uh, recent pronouncement was President Museveni. After July 2014, President Museveni came out publicly and said, but Chionga had told us about this possible complication. So for me, it, it's not a hidden fact that Initially, I did not agree with the creation of a cultural institution in our area. And I had seven reasons with those who followed me. But a point reached where I could see neither we who are objecting, neither those who are supporting, nobody was advancing. And tension was building up in the area. And I felt that it was my responsibility to get air out of this tension. And I worked. I don't know if you, you asked those elders. Myself, I worked for months to look for opinion leaders who did not agree with the cultural institution to convince them that we should accept. I could see that that tension, if it lasted more, we could even get genocide. Because of that, pledges for the kingdom were not fulfilled, uh, which cast the government in a negative on the side of the Singapore Renzuru. 
and that had multiple impact and effects to the extent of finally a build-up of the opposition uh, against uh, the NRM. Myself, I'm on record whenever there is an uh, anniversary for the, the, the kingdom, there is no MP who has paid more money than myself contributing to that place. So here, there where you see people who are playing and principled politics, if they see as if you're getting close to the kingdom, they must create stories. If you allow Chihonga to be close to the king, he's going to undermine the king. He's... The reason is if they are not close, then they are advantage. For me, you will never, all the time I've been elected, I've never appealed on the basis of kingdom. And if you go to my constituency, even this last election, which I kept quiet about. The, the land particularly in Nyakatons, in Rehingo, that uh, Dr. Kionga was a key player in resettling the youths to avoid those youths being recruited into rebellion. But that later on, those youths were, were can I call it disenfranchised in terms of land ownership and instead he offered and supported its distribution to some other elders of, of Bakonzo origin. And that has complicated the issue when it went to court and so on, and um, uh, the determination determined, uh, and, and they continued to hold on to that land vis-a-vis -vis the newcomers, the immigrants, so to say, they were Songora, and that complicates it. It's true when Naro started around 89, 90. Me and Mr. Bam said that we went up the mountain to pray and we fought so many young people. We feared that this would be, just as he has put it. Mr. Bam said there was the cow there. He knew of some land which he said was public. I said, no, let's ask the parents. We take these young people there. And we took them there on a piece of land which is just 600 acres. Again, that's why I like numbers. When someone tells you about that land, you can think that it is 10 square miles. 600 acres, we took young people, they cultivated cotton, they even won a prize for being the best youth in Uganda that time. Ah, then uh, along the way, cultivators and, uh, and, 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 and the cattle keepers, they started uh, fighting along there. So someone made an error. You see, insensitive of the politics. He, he just told the, the peasants who were on that land that they should go away. Yeah. This is, uh, as you have said, those who are talking about marginalization, favoring uh, certain tribes, these are how they, they form these impressions.